All right, welcome everybody. I'm so glad that you joined me tonight. Um, I know I posted it kind of short notice, but hopefully you guys are used to me doing this every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Well, let's get it on me instead of on my desk. <laughs> I'm starting great. Um, anyway, if you're new to watching me, please type in the comments and let me know that you're here. The, they've kind of updated my Switcher Studio, so hopefully I will see your comments. Um, because it's saying something a little bit different than it normally does. So hopefully I will see your comments if you guys are here and you type in comments. Um, that's also the best way to ask me a question. Just type it in while I'm going through uh, the card making tonight and I try my best to look up and see what's going on there. Um, so let me take care of some housekeeping really quick. So this is my hostess code this month. Um, and oh great, thanks Mel, I can see it. So the hostess code for April is Z4K9YV6Z. And um, you can place an order with me through juliebrown.stampinup.net. And while I'm talking about orders, um, they added, now of course this stuff goes so dang quick, but they did add this morning some new um, things to the clearance rack. So if you haven't looked at the clearance rack in a while, you can just go on to Julie's Creative Stampin' at, um, juliebrown.stampinup.net and click on clearance and you can see all the new things that are in clearance. So um, I definitely suggest that you do that um, anytime that we have a catalog that's going out um, and we have a new one coming in. They are constantly putting new things in the clearance rack. So you guys might want to be checking that at least once a week. Um, and usually Tuesdays are a good day to, to check that on Tuesday mornings. So you can also check me out at my Pinterest and Facebook page, which you're on my Facebook page, Julie's Creative Stamping. That's also my YouTube page. And then my blog is stampinjuliebrown.blogspot.com. That's where I usually put step-by-step -step instructions of the cards that I do um, here if you don't want to sit and watch this to try to figure out sizes and stuff. So there you go. Okay, so let's switch over to what we're going to be using tonight. So I'm going to use, these two are in the mini catalog. And I sometimes think that we kind of look past these, car, these stamp sets that are in the mini catalog because we're so interested in the bundles. And so I wanted to play with these two tonight because they're just a really fun set. And so the hot dog one, it's got the little Dotsons on it. Um, and it is a photopolymer stamp set. And then the baby pool toys is um, a cling, cling stamp set, which is the red rubber. All righty. So let's get started because we are doing a fun fold card. We're doing a Z fold card tonight. And so I want to give myself enough time. I've done a lot of the pre-work, but we're still going to move forward um, so that you guys, we can get through this card. Plus I have some extra cards to show you that I made with um, these sets. Okay, so basically you're going to take a four and a half, four and a half, four and a quarter by 11, whisper white piece and then you are going to score it at two and three quarters move it over to over to where this edge is at five and a half and you're going to score it again then you fold it so that's a valley fold because it's down and then this is a mountain fold so that's how you fold it so that it looks like this and then I always burnish it, and that just means pushing down the edges. So I always try to burnish it really good. All right, so there's that piece. Then you're going to have another piece that is one and a quarter by 11, and you're going to score that in the exact same place. So you're going to score it at two and three quarters, move it over, and score it at five and a half. This one, we fold this a mountain fold. I had to turn it the right way. And then this is the valley fold so that it looks like such. All right. Then you are going to need for all of this, um, we're going to talk about the panels first. So for this big panel right here, um, this 
balmy blue is five and three four four and an eighth by five and three eighths and then for the two panels here it's two and five eighths by four and an eighth and then these are going to be the strips that fit onto this piece and they are cut at um one by this is one by five and a quarter and then you need two that are one by two and a half. I'm getting all the pieces out of the way first so we can. <laughs> okay, then you're going to need, um, and I am using the in color um, from, so it's the, it's the 2000 and, um, what is it, 2019 through 2021 in color. Let me look and make sure that's right. No, 2020, 2022 comes in a pack just like this. Um, this is going to be, th these patterns are going to be gone when this catalog is done. So if you like the patterns in this, you want to get this now before they sell out of it. And it comes with all of the in colors and it has all these fun patterns. So it has the words, it has the polka dots. It has this like denim looking thing um, on the back and then it has like a wood grain and, it, and it's in all of the colors. Now these, they're, they'll, they, we will have the 2020-2022 in the designer series paper in the new catalog, but it will be different patterns. So just so you know. So if you like these patterns, you might want to um, put that on your I want list. Um, so anyway, you're going to need one of these that is um, three and three quarters by five and a quarter. And I thought I did that. Let me make sure that's right. I may have cut that. I cut that weight. Yeah, it's supposed to be four. Um, so I will recut this one. And then this one is going to be two and a half by three and three quarters. Let me make sure I did all these. I did all of these two, all of these wrong. Okay, so we're, let me grab, <laughs> let me grab um, a sheet of that and let's cut it correctly. I had had it written down a smaller size and then I didn't like the smaller size, so I changed it up. So now you guys just get to watch me cut. Okay, so this is supposed to be, uh, let's see, two and a half by four. So let's do the four. And then I need a two and a half. Let me make sure that's right. Yes, that's right. And then another two and a half. And then I need the big piece as well. So let me grab a piece for that because I cut that one wrong as well. Like I said, I was going to do it a little bit differently. And at the last minute, I changed it, which is not a good thing to do when you're fixing to go on. So this is supposed to be four by five and a quarter. So let me go over those measurements again since I kind of messed that up a little bit. Okay, so the big one is four by five and a quarter and then the two little ones are two and a half by four. There we go. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to start putting this together, and then we're going to decorate it um, after we get it put together. So I'm just going to kind of move these pieces out of the side. So I'm going to put my solid cardstock first because that's kind of the base. And so we're just going to, um, I'm going to use the uh, stamp and seal, and we're just going to get all of these pieces on first. And it should leave just a smidgen of an edge, not much. Okay, so there's that panel. And then I'm gonna bring in my next panel. 
So I want to know if any of you guys have been crafting or doing anything fun. Because, you know, there is stuff that's fun besides just making cards. Don't tell anybody, but there is. All right. And then we're going to pull this next one. So I know this is kind of the boring part, just kind of watching me put it all together. And I think all of us have done quite a few Z cards, so we kind of know... Um, you know, how these work pretty good and how to get them together pretty good. Alrighty, and then now I'm gonna take these designer series paper pieces. Oh, crocheting. You know what? Um, my daughter had a garage sale just recently, Mel, and I actually sold all of my um, yarn because I just don't have any time for crocheting anymore. It was kind of sad to see it go, but I just, I'm kind of in that mood where I'm just getting rid of stuff that I don't use anymore or don't do things with anymore. So this piece is going to be with the polka dots. Then I'm going to take the this middle piece and I'm going to turn it to this side so that it has a different pattern on that one. I used to crochet like every time I traveled, but um, haven't done that lately. I don't know why. I just kind of quit doing it. And I sold all of my cross stitch stuff too. I just kind of went through and got rid of all of the stuff that I've had sitting here for ages that I've never even looked at. I haven't even looked at it in the last 10 years. So figured it was time to let it go. So what are you crocheting? What are you making? Anything specific? Oh, and just a quick question for those of you that do order from me. Um, have any of you gotten your um, catalogs yet? Because I actually sent myself one and I got mine today. So I was curious if any of the rest of you have gotten yours. So for this piece, we're not using designer series paper. We're just using the um, balmy blue strips. So we're just going to put these on. So hopefully you guys will be seeing your um, catalogs here pretty soon. That's exciting, huh? Oh, okay. No catalog yet. Oh, bummer. And just trying some new patterns. Nothing specific. Okay. That's always fun when you're trying new stuff, isn't it? All right. So let's get... Again, if you're new to the site, just make sure that if you have questions that you type them in so I can answer them. We are working on a Z fold card for those of you that are just coming in. So it is another fun fold card. All right, so we've got these pieces so far all right so then i'm going to actually go ahead and put this together um and then i will decorate the card so i'm going to actually use my um liquid glue because i think it gives it a really good hold and um it gives me some wiggle room you guys know i like the whole wiggle room so the way that this goes is you're going to take this edge, figure out how much room you want at the bottom, and then just, and it's probably more figure out how much room you want at the top because the top's kind of where I design. Then I'm just gonna lay that down. Let me turn it just so I can see. 
Okay, so we're gonna turn that like so. And then what I do is um, it's gonna fold and it's gonna close like so. And so what I do is I just kind of look at where, because I don't want any glue on this part of the back of this section right here. I just want glue behind here. So I kind of just hold my finger there, turn it over, keep my finger down, and then just put glue like so. Um, that way I know I'm not getting glue where I don't want it. And again, this makes placement really easy because I've already glued this side. So now I just need to lay this side down. And again, I am gonna turn it because sometimes it does get a little cattywankus on me. All right. And then it looks like this is kind of sticking off a little bit on this edge. So I'm gonna just come in and trim that. Just so it doesn't stick out like that. Except I didn't get that top part. Actually, that tells me I don't quite have this on here straight. All right, so let's get that. All righty. Okay, so there's the Z-fold. That's how Z-fold cards work. Well, I guess they call this a double Z-fold because a single Z-fold is just this back part. And then when you add this little strip, it's a, it's a because we've got two Zs if you look at it, right? Two Zs. So there's our double Z fold. Okay, so then what I did is I went ahead and stamped and used, um, let me bring this in a little bit closer. I stamped, now these three came from the baby pool toys and then the dog came from the hot dog. So I'm just gonna color my dog in and I actually wanted him to be, I'm gonna use the um, cinnamon cider Stampin' Blends, and I know a lot of you guys know, already know how to do this, but I always feel like every so often I need to stop and and uh, do some blending, and I figured the dog would be the best one to do it on because he it'll be the easiest one, or I should say the quickest. So I just kind of go, you know, where I think there might be darker spots. And then like I'm gonna kind of draw in like where his leg would bend there and kind of same thing here. Except I think I just curved that the wrong way. It should curve that way. Okay, and then I'm just gonna kind of bring in a line up here. We're gonna color in it, um, his ear. And then again, I'm just I'm just putting like little highlights where I think, oh, I guess I should get that in the camera, <laughs> where I think that there would be highlights and, you know, where it would be darker. Then I just come in with the lighter one and then I just start. And again, it's, it's about saturation. It's not about pushing hard with your pins. The wetter you get it the more this all starts to blend together. So I've got several friends that um, have Dotsons, and so I thought this was a really cute set. It made me think of them and their little puppies. They seem to be a pretty popular little dog. Like I said, I've got uh, several friends who have them. I do not. I know my daughter wanted one so bad when she was little. I say little, she was about 12 or 13. But at that time we had a cabillion rabbits and so I wasn't up to getting another animal. All right, so we're just gonna color that dog in and then I'm gonna come in and I, this dog did not come stamped with this little bow. Um, yeah, Terry's who I was thinking of too, Mel. Um, so I stamped, so in this stamp set, if you look at the stamp set, it's got all these cute little things, but see this little tiny bow? So I actually stamped that bow 
um, onto this dog. As you can see, he didn't have the bow. But I wanted him to have a bow. So now I'm gonna bring in the dark balmy blue and do this middle part of the bow right there. And then I'm going to bring in um, the dark knight of navy and just color the ends of the bows. Yeah, and Jean, Jean Hudgens' mail has a little Dotson as well that she got, I think about it like a year or so ago. Now, unfortunately, these don't come with dies, and I think that's why we all have a tendency to buy the dies is because it's a little easier to, um, you know, have dies to cut them out. So I'm just going to fussy cut these out, and to do that, um, I'm just going to first kind of cut them apart because I find that easier. Plus, I need these little sayings up here and I need kind of quite a bit of room around them. So I'm just gonna kinda get these guys cut as close to the animals as I can and then leave this section up here because I'm gonna be cutting that in just a second, okay? So I'll try to do this fairly quickly. I know, again, it's kind of boring sometimes watching people cut. But like I said, I have found that if I just kind of, you know, keep my scissors to where they're cutting and I move everything kind of with my left hand, that I have a better, it, it just comes out better for me. But everybody has to find their own way for doing like the fussy cutting. Whatever's the most comfortable for you is what's going to be the best, obviously. And I'm not going to get like real detailed in my cutting out here. Um, like probably when I get to the hind legs, I'm not going to cut up between the legs. But fussy cutting is just kind of leaving that white edge around um, the image that you're cutting out. So that's what we're working on right now. So yeah, just like I said, it just, you know, whatever, whatever is comfortable for you is, is obviously what you'll want to do. But I just found that I do better when I'm moving the left side, you know, using my left hand to kind of finagle and move, like do the turns and stuff. Cause then I, then I don't get those like jagged edges. I get a more smooth edge around what I'm cutting out. All right, so there's our puppy dog. And then we're gonna cut out each of these as well. I was gonna do this ahead of time, but I'm telling you my day-to-day -day was just crazy. It's just, yeah, I don't know what it is. Sometimes you just have those days where you think you're gonna have tons of time and then, you know, everybody and their mother calls and needs you to do something for them. And, and um, I just kept getting farther and farther behind today. So I apologize that you guys are having to watch me cut because I my intention was to only cut out to color and cut out the dog and have the rest of this cut out for it for you guys. So you didn't have to sit and watch me do this. But um, that didn't happen. So yeah, I had my youngest grandkids. I say youngest, the ones that live here, because I the my youngest live in Nevada with my son and and my daughter in law. And um, but my youngest here, I watch them on Tuesdays. I pick them up from school on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and then we wait for mom to get home. So it was a little, you know, and sometimes they, sometimes they don't want grandma's attention and then sometimes they, that's all they want is my attention. So I never know how the day's going to go <laughs> when they're here. It's, you know, when I want to do something with them, they're always like, oh, grandma, we're tired. We just want to play. So, and that's fine too. 
So you just never know when to plan things, right? Okay, so now we're gonna cut out this little lion. And the colors that I, oh, so let me go over. So this was Daffodil Delight and the light soft suede and then the real red is for the wagon. And then for the lion's mane, I used Cajun Craze, um, dark and light. And then his body is the Daffodil Delight. And of course the wagon is, um, oops, I don't know. It got stuck there. The wagon is real red. That's not wanting to turn for some reason. And the wheels are the dark um, smoky slate. Just so you know the colors that I used. Okay, so we're just gonna cut these out. And again, I apologize. I'm almost there, guys, almost there. Just one more to cut out. And we will be ready to go. And you guys know how much I hate cutting. Can you believe I'm doing this? It's kind of unbelievable. I'm actually getting more comfortable with cutting. Not that I love it, but the deal is, is I love a lot of these stamp sets that don't have dies that go with them. And then I end up wanting to do what I'm doing here and pop them up or you know, not actually stamp them onto, um, just do simple stamping, which is what I should be doing, but no, I had to make it harder on me. Okay, we're down to the elephant. The elephant, of course, is the dark and light smoky slate, and then the same colors for the wagon. And of course I used black memento ink was the what I stamped them in to begin with before I colored them. Thank goodness I had a chance to color them and you guys didn't have to sit and watch me color all this as well, huh? I'm trying to get things where I'm a little bit more prepared so you guys don't have to watch so much of this stuff. Although, you know, sometimes we do have new people on that don't know how to do the blend. So I guess it's good that I do show part of that. And probably some people that don't know what fussy cutting is. And so again, I guess it's good that once in a while I do show how to do that. And then we have the pros who know how to do it all, right? <laughs> so I was kind of we had we had some, a really nice weather last week and then I went to go pick up Emmett from school today and it was raining I, which I mean you know I'm always happy for the moisture but I just I just never know what the weather is going to be like here anymore it's just so so crazy okay so I'm going to set those to the side here, let me bring you out. Oh, wrong way. And then these, because I think I needed this to be like an inch by two and a half. So hopefully I have an, enough, I have a, the space for an inch. We'll see. It looks like I'm good. So let me, I'm just going to cut this side. And then I think this needed to be two and a half. Was it two and a half? Let me think here. Yeah, but I'm gonna kind of push it that way a little bit so that I my word is kind of a little straighter on here. And then I'll turn it around and measure right at two and a half. All right, so there's that one. And it says, love just got real. And then this one, I believe, is, is it an inch by an inch and a half? Let me see what an inch and a half looks like. Yeah, maybe it is. Let me just kind of cut close to the exclamation point, and then I think it's one and a half. It was one by one and a half. Yep, that was right. Okay. All right, and then we I did have two other white pieces that I didn't tell you about. <laughs> and let me bring those in. Hey, Shanine. 
So we're doing a fun fold cut, a double Z fold card tonight. So then we're gonna need, you're gonna need two white pieces. This one is one and a half by two. And this one is one and three quarters by two and a quarter. And this one we're gonna bring in. Um, so Shanine, we're working with these two sets, the hot dog and the baby pool toys. And you just missed, oh fun, me having to hand cut everything out. Mel got to sit through all that. So, um, like I said, I think we tend to not, not always look at these because we do have to do some hand cutting out if we're going to do like what I'm doing. But you can also just stamp these onto cards, um, you know, and, and color them and they look terrific that way as well. Okay, so now let's see, this is going to be the trick. If I can get this centered on this little, I'm not giving myself any like wiggle room here. Okay, so that says for the little ones who tug our hearts. Let me move some stuff here. And then um, one of the things we're going to do on this little the back of the lion because when when I get it on this Z fold card um, the back the, the the way it folds together the back of the lion's head shows and because we're coloring with blends that doesn't look really good so what I'm gonna do with this little lion Yeah, that would have been nice, huh, Shanine, if they came out with new dyes. Unfortunately, they do not come out with dyes for everything, which, you know, I'm like, why not? But, hey, I guess we have to, you know, work with it. So I'm just going to kind of cover this, and you'll you'll see why I'm doing this in um, when I put the, whoops, put it together on the card. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of let that be and let it dry just a little bit and then what I'm gonna do is turn this over and I'm gonna trim again because obviously we don't want to see this on the lion but you'll understand why I did that when you see the when I get it on the Z fold card okay so it, it was just a little scrap of the designer series paper that I put on the back there. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do with all of these white pieces, and I know that I know this isn't big, but this is actually where you would sign your name and write a little note. <laughs> I didn't give you a lot of room to write a note because this card kind of says it all. And so I'm gonna bring in my dauber and I'm gonna bring in my Knight of Navy ink and I'm just gonna sponge around all of these little sentiments and again it just gives it a dimensional look when you do this it makes it pop more off of the page instead of sit so flat on the page so this is just another idea for um, you know designing and and such it, it just helps you with if you know if, if you're putting a card together and it's looking kind of flat you can just try chalking around the edges because sometimes that's all it takes to really make it pop I mean look at the difference it I mean you can see how this kind of pops up off of this white and this one just kind of blends in and that's what we're looking for here is something that's just going to give it that little extra umph when you're making your cards. All right, so that's how easy that is. All right, so now what we're going to do is, oh, I was going to, um, there's this cute little heart stamp. Um, and but there's like three hearts on it and I don't um, necessarily want all three hearts on here we'll see how it comes out <laughs> um, and I'm gonna bring in balmy blue ink and I'm gonna see if I can get just this bottom heart on the top of this where it says it's a boy perfect 
Can you see that? Little heart. And then I also kind of want to put it up in, actually, you know, I think I want it down in this section down here. And then do one like right there. And even if it's not the whole heart that's on there, it still looks kind of cute. And again, you can see I wasn't real precise with that. I just kind of went through and stuck it on there. All right. I just wanted to clean those stamps. Okay. So we've done um, all of our coloring. And so now we're ready to put our card together. So this is the Z fold. So I know some of you are just joining us. It's called a double Z fold because the back is a Z fold and then this little strip is a Z fold. So if you want to learn how to make this, you'll have to go back to the beginning <laughs> of this video because I showed you how to score and all of that stuff. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of lay it open just so I can kind of get an idea of where everything needs to go. So I want to put this little, it's a boy, and I'm going to actually close this just so that I get my left to right measurements right and again I'm using liquid glue so that I can move it around if I need to okay so as I close that then I can better get my left and right edges more correct or I should say lined up All right, so here's that. And then I'm going to open that up. And then this one that is this, it says for the little ones who tug um, on our heartstrings. Again, I want to make sure it gets covered when it's closed. So we're going to pull this off. And again, a liquid glue is your friend when you're trying to place things and you want it to be able to, so that you can move it. Now I'm putting it kind of far up because I'm gonna have, you know, some little guys down here and I don't want them to cover up the messages here. We're gonna be putting on our little uh, baby pool toys. I actually remember playing with a little duck that was on a pool toy when I was little. My grand, I, it's, it's, it's one of the toys that even as I got older, my grandma and grandpa always kept it at their house. And I remember taking my grandkids for the first time. And of course, I think the youngest was to my grandkids, my kids, the youngest was Tori and <laughs> Um, and it was just, I just kind of giggled because um, she was a lot like me and just wanted to play with it, even though it's a baby, it was a baby's toy. But I remember her pulling that little duck toy around too. And I think she might have been like maybe seven or eight when we took her. Okay, so that's how the, the sayings are going to look. So now we're going to add all of our little animals. And I guess we can start from this side. So we're gonna take the giraffe. Now, because it sticks up above, you wanna make sure you're only putting glue on the bottom part. Okay, so I'm just gonna kinda of put it on the bottom. This one, it's not like this one you could put, and I actually am gonna go ahead and put glue on the top because it's not on one of these that there's an open back to. This one is actually glued down. So this one you can actually glue it all the way down. Darn it. I did not want that to move like that. Okay, so then I'm gonna come in. The next one is gonna be the lion. And because I already have this kind of there, I'm just gonna put the glue on the bottom of the lion because I don't want it where the, his head is gonna be above the line. And so our little lion is gonna go like so.
Then we're gonna come in with our little elephant, and actually these two are gonna go on together. So, cause I need to measure and make sure I don't push the dog off the... <laughs> so I'm gonna kinda lay those two down together. <gasps> oh, and I just did the wrong thing. Oh my gosh. I do not want glue up there. So let me bring in my little glue eraser. See, that's what happens when you don't pay attention to what you're doing. Because you definitely don't want glue on the back of this, otherwise it's gonna glue this Z fold together and it won't be able to open. So let me just make sure I got all the sticky off of there. And I may have to come in in a, in a minute and put some baby powder. So if all else fails, you can always put baby powder where you get glue that you don't, where you don't want glue. All right. So now the dog, I'm going to kind of measure how the dog goes on here. And again, just the, you know, a little bit of that. I'm not going to go quite up to the tip of the tail. But I'm going to get a lot of glue here. And then, the, you know, we're not going to get go too high on the head either. Although this section is another section that is glued all the way down. So you wouldn't have to worry about it as much on this section. Okay. Then what I'm going to do to kind of finish this off, let me make sure, yeah, there's no glue back there. So then what I'm going to do is I am going to bring in um, my uh, black, uh, basic black marker, and I am actually going to draw in like a little rope into the dog's mouth. So I'm just going to kind of, and I'm doing it with little dashes because I want to make it look like the dog is pulling the pull, the, the, um, toys. And so let me, I see some glue right here because this one was moving around a lot too. So I don't think Stampin' Up! sells these glue erasers anymore, but they're really good to have, um, I think you can get them on Stampin' Up or uh, Scrap, oh, what is it called? Scrapbook.com? I'm not sure. Okay, so then we're just gonna, again, just make it go this way. So basically it's just giving the illusion that, that the dog is pulling the toys. So remember when I said I put that on the back of the lion? So can now, now can you see why I did that? Because you can see the top of the lion's head and I didn't want to see the back of the lion's head. I think it looks cuter with the dots because it kind of blends in and you can't even tell. So that is the, the card. But stay with me because I have two other cards to show you. So that's our Z fold. So it says love just got real with the little dog pulling the... And then you open it up and it says for the little ones who tug on our heartstrings, it's a boy. And then again, this is where you would sign obviously I didn't give you a lot of room there but you know I guess if you wanted to you could write something and then stick it on there and then they would have to read it when they open it because it's it kind of it's I you guys can't see that but when it sits up you know it sits kind of like that so what do you think a cute card huh and I love that the dog's pulling the pull toys so fun Okay, so I want to show you a couple other cards. I did one card in each of these sets um, where I didn't combine them, and I wanted to show you that. So this one, I wanted it to look like, so I kind of chopped off the wheels and the wagon, but I wanted to look like it was pictures hanging on a wall. And so I colored, I did, I cut, obviously I used pinks, and... I used our uh, layering squares 
Um, and again, guys, these are things that are going to be gone. So if you want layering squares and you don't have them, see how it did the scalloped and then it did. So I used the straight edge for the straight edge and the scalloped um, from the layering squares. And this is the layering ovals. Again, if you don't have them and you want them, they are going, going gone but when by the time the next catalog, you know, in May. They'll be gone in May. And then I used some, this is older. It was a wood grain paper and then I just did the happy birthday and I used that pick a banner punch to do the banner so isn't it cute and then I just with it with the black marker I drew the little lines to make it look like it was hanging on the wall and then I added uh, these are I think uh, the noble peacock um embellishments but if you don't have those you could color it in and I did use Rococo Rose because I'm kind of trying to say goodbye to that color and then on the inside um, this little saying here comes from itty bitty birthdays and again that stamp set is going so if you like that stamp set you need to look at getting it and then the stars came from the pool toys so do you guys like it I thought that was cute trying to make them look like pictures hanging on a wall. So there's that card. Then for the um, hot dog card, I had a brilliant idea because I had some of this paper left over. <coughs> <coughs> Again, this paper is leaving. So um, if you want um, this, this, the Playful Pets paper, and so I, remember that paper? <laughs> so I just, so I colored the dots in, and this is, this is one of the other images. So I colored the dots in with um, the blends, and I cut it out. And then these little bones are actually part of, here, let me pull that stamp set. So the bones are part of the stamp set. And then this hot dog, it's your birthday, is part of that stamp set. Isn't it cute? <laughs> And then these little trinkets were also from that Playful Pets. Um, I don't even know if you can get those anymore because, again, all of this stuff is leaving. And this ribbon is also from the Playful Pets. But I just thought it would be fun to pull back in the Playful Pets paper and then add the hot dog to it. Um, and look how cute that is. And then look what I did on the inside. So on the inside, again, these little paw prints are part of this stamp set. And so I did the, the front half and the back half of the dots and like dogs were walking across. And then this is from the Curvy Celebrations um, or the Quite Curvy Wishing You the Happiest of Birthdays. So isn't this cute? So I don't even know if this paper is still available because it was so popular. But if it is available and if you like the hot dog stamp, I would definitely get some of this paper. Oh, and I did want to show you this. So this is the... Um, stitched with whimsy dies and the thing about these dies can you guys see this so I actually cut out a square and what these dies do is they don't cut out the square they just put the stitch the dies emboss that stitching around it and then of course this big square was from the layering um, layering squares so can you guys I don't know if you guys can see it can you guys see the stitching so this, so let me, uh, yeah, I've got them here. So let me show you this set. This is a, this is a set, and the, both of these um, cards were from the mini catalog. But see this? So it doesn't actually cut it out. All it does is imprint the stitching on whatever you're doing. So I had to cut the square, and then I... I used this one right here and I just laid that on there, ran it through the embossing or, or the die cut machine. And it basically, even though they're called dies, they basically just emboss that stitching. I know, isn't this cute? Yes, I love this. Um, and like I said, I was trying to think of what paper to use and I thought, oh wait, I still have some of that Playful Pets paper. And so I went and grabbed that and... Um, yeah, and I love the hot dog, it's your birthday. But again, I did bring in the, the um, quite curvy, um, wishing you the happiest of birthdays. So yeah, all right. So, so let me see if I can get all of the cards that I did tonight for you guys. 
I just think, and then of course I want to bring these in because I did use these dies. Trying to bring in everything I used tonight. I mean, obviously I used some other stuff, but then here's the, um, and then that's the card that is strictly with this one. I'm running out of room. And then of course our um, Z fold card with the, with the pull toys and the doggy. So fun, huh? And you know, think about this because you could do one of these Z fold cards um, for someone who, um, who their dog is having babies, right? Um, and you could get send them a card. And like I said, you know, dog lovers are going to love this little um, card here. And then I just thought this would be a fun one for a young, like a young grandchild that you might have for a, a fun, happy birthday for them as well. So anyway, those are the cards that I had for tonight. Again, don't forget, like I told you earlier. Um, oh, let me put them up really quick. So the hot dog stamp set is on in the mini catalog, page 72. That's the item number. The baby pull toys um, is on page 64. And that's the item number. And then the stitched with whimsy dies is on the same page as the hot dog um, stamp set. It's on page 72. So let's clear all those out of there. So again, guys, don't forget... They are constantly adding more things onto the clearance rack, but they things go so fast. And like I told you earlier, this the, the I used the 2020-2022 in color. Oh, let me. This is what I used for the Z fold card. And these designs, now they're still gonna they're gonna come out with new designs in these colors, because this is last year's in colors. But these designs with the polka dots and everything are going to be gone. So this is something, too, that you want to think about. And then I believe the quite curvy stamp set is also leaving. So all of this in with May 4th, a lot of these things are going to be gone. Now, hopefully this stuff, should, except for the paper here um, and the paper here, but these two stamp sets are in the mini catalog, so they should still be good until the end of June. Um, but everything else that I, uh, you know, the, the quite curvy, the paper, this paper um, is all probably on. Um, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if it's on the clearance rack. So anyway, just make sure you're checking that clearance rack. And um, let me put up my hostess code for this month one more time. And don't forget, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. The more subscriptions I get, um, the more flexibility I have on uh, putting things on YouTube. Same thing with this Facebook page. Make sure you like and follow my Facebook page because um, that's the way social media works. The more likes and stuff that I get, the better. So anyway... Um, there's a last look at all the cards we did tonight. Obviously, I only walked you through this card, but I did kind of explain the, this card um, and this card to you. So, uh, appreciate you guys being here tonight. And um, I'll be talking to you on Tuesday. So, oh, I did want to say something. If you guys have ever thought about doing Paper Pumpkin, on May 7th, they are having what's called a... Um, subscribe-a-thon and so they are offering the may paper pumpkin which is going to be a baseball themed um paper pumpkin um they are offering that on may 27th for five dollars you need to go to um my uh julie brown independent stampin up demonstrator facebook page and there's a code in there that you will need to enter, and it's on there. If you are ever thinking about getting it, you can get that one for $5. Um, and the funny thing is they're actually including um, bubble gum in the in the paper pumpkin. Um, how fun is that? They're going to put some bubble gum in there um, just because it's all about baseball themed. So it looks like a really fun paper pumpkin, but that's definitely the time to try it. Um, but that, that $5 special... Because they're normally $22, and that $5 special is going to be May 7th only, and you need to enter that code. 
and I don't have that code with me right now. I apologize. Um, but hopefully maybe by next um, week, we still have time before May 7th, I can have that code up for everybody. So anyway, you guys have a great night, and I will talk to you next Tuesday. Bye.